everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, if we have never met before, this is my channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. Today is especially interesting because we're going to be talking on the internet about how to take plant advice from the internet. <laughs> So this video is going to challenge hopefully a lot of the things that you've heard from other people Hopefully it will give you some courage or I guess inspiration to sort of go out on your own and figure out what your plants need Taking advice here and there, but also forming your own opinions about what your plants need so before I, you know, get started, I just wanted to say thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. My first piece of advice for taking plant advice online is to take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Now, I think that it's very important to acknowledge that most of the people who make plant videos, who write plant blogs, are not horticulturalists and What's the other one? It starts with a G, plant scientists. I clearly am not that. I have never claimed to be that. So a lot of us are hobbyists. We've been collecting houseplants for a long time and we just choose to share our experiences, what we've learned, our observations as a springboard for you to take our advice and do with it what you will. And I think in the mind of a new plant person, especially transporting myself back to when I was very new, I would hear plant advice online and think that it was gospel. Like this is it, this is the only plant advice out there. And then my mind was sort of like confounded when I went to research something and I found something completely different or even slightly different, enough that it was a little bit confusing and I didn't know who was right and who was wrong. So with that being said, I want you to know that though we are not like, you know, horticulturalists, plant scientists and everything else, we do have some good things to say, but it is never supposed to be like Bible. <laughs> and the reason for that is nobody, not even plant scientists can give plant advice that will cover plant needs in every part of the world in every type of conditions. Maybe if they were talking to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, it would be a little bit different, but when you're giving advice online, it is typically much more general. When you're reading a book, it's much more general because the idea is to reach as big of an audience as possible without being too narrow and too specific because then your content wouldn't be applicable to a lot of different people. Therefore, not that many people would see it. So with that said, I always want to challenge challenge you to look at the advice that you are hearing, reading, or seeing, and think about how that will fit best into your life, and maybe take little sprinkles of advice from other people and add that into the whole of your plant care. And I think that I have talked about this on my channel before because I remember in my head a fruit basket analogy. So to make your own fruit basket, you can take fruit from a bunch of different places and it's your unique fruit basket. I think it was something like that. And I, I liked that um, analogy. <laughs> so remember that when you're taking plant advice online that not everybody is going to have the um, perfect solution for you and your plants and it's best that you take advice from everybody just a little bit of everybody and make your own plan if you are wanting to follow people online as I'm sure you're following me you're watching this video so you have some interest in watching plant creators I would suggest that in addition to watching whoever you want you also try to find somebody who lives in a similar area zone or region to you. So it's really helpful when you can find somebody who also lives in very similar conditions as you. And that isn't to say that your plants are always gonna act the same because as I say, every environment is unique. So even though I have this Monstera in my house in Columbia, Missouri, somebody else in Columbia, Missouri could have a Monstera in completely different conditions. And it really just depends on the internal conditions of the home that really makes the biggest difference. But I do find that when I am following somebody who lives in my area, I can sort of follow their lead in bringing plants outside when it's appropriate or bringing them back in when it's appropriate or just knowing how intense the sun is in your specific area. Because for me, where I currently live, like for example, a north window is not a good window. 
not that much light comes in. But Adam, not dude, who lives in Arizona, has a lot of his beloved plants in north windows. And I would never suggest that for somebody who lives in my region, but I would suggest that for somebody who lives in Arizona in his region. So it really just depends on a lot of these things. And if you were following me and you were taking everything I said as gospel and I said north windows are not good, but you're in Arizona and your north windows are good, it's a little bit confusing, right? So I think it's important to follow somebody um, in your area in addition to everyone else you also enjoy watching and listening to. Let's take a moment to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Audible. Audible is the leading provider for spoken word entertainment, including audiobooks, podcasts, guided meditations, and more. You can find titles that are new releases, bestsellers, celebrity memoirs, business talk, self-help talk, all of these different things. The way that it works is when you become an Audible member, you get one credit every month to use on a book of your choosing from their premium selection. I typically use my monthly credit when I'm looking for a book that my library doesn't have because my library doesn't always have all the audiobooks that I'm looking for. So it's really nice to know that Audible will always have it. If you've been following along with my videos lately, you might've heard that I read the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, which was so good by the way, please read it. It, but I was looking into other books by Sarah J Mass and I found her Throne of Glass series and I really really wanted to read it but the audiobooks are not available at my library and I knew that Audible would have it so I'm so excited to use my credit and read that series. I'll let you guys know what I think. And also when you are an Audible member, you get access to their entire Plus catalog, which includes a lot of exclusive content such as celebrity chats, sleep meditations, podcasts, and more. And another great perk is that you can download whatever you're listening to so that you can listen to it offline so you don't have to rely on internet connection if you're flying or driving or you just have um, interesting internet connection like me. <laughs> so if you are interested in checking out Audible with a 30-day free trial, you can head over to audible.com slash DeLaPlants or text DeLaPlants to 500-500 to check it out. All right, let's get back into the video. My next piece of advice is to find a reference book that you really enjoy and stick with that. Of course, you can sprinkle in some internet research along with that, but also I have found so much goodness in plant books, even if they are older, there's so much information to glean from them. And I find that that's a good way to find like solid information that doesn't contradict itself. Because as I mentioned before, internet searches can sometimes say a plant needs indirect light. Others will say it needs bright indirect light. And it's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that people who write plant reference books, me being one of them, has thought about this and has wanted to make the text as clear as possible for what each plant would need. So maybe check out a plant reference book. I did just mention that I wrote one. It's called Houseplants for Beginners and it's now available in hardcover, which is really exciting. So if you're interested in that, I'll have some places linked in the description box where you can purchase it. But yeah, it's really exciting to have that out and like have a place to like point people like in a direction, but also there's a lot of other good reference books that you can reference and I'll have some of those linked down below as well. And my final piece of advice is to understand that you're going to have to absorb a lot of information and make your own plan anyway. So I sort of touched on this in the beginning and I just wanna bring it back to that because I think that this is the most important part of owning plants of living life, of all of these things. You can read, 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 read. You can listen, 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 listen. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to create your own opinions and your own plans for how you're going to take care of your plants. So like I said with the fruit basket, you need to create your own fruit basket and figure out what works for you. And also it's good to understand that what works for you might not work for everybody else because your conditions might be different. Your life schedule might be different. And I think it's important that we don't walk around saying that everything should be done this way, everything needs to be done this way. You know, we don't wanna should on other people. If you've heard that, I think it's a funny little phrase, but it's true, you don't wanna should on people saying you should be doing this, you should be doing this. Because 
It just depends, honestly. House plants can live in a lot of different environments, a lot of different conditions, and just as a testament, like I lived in Tucson with all of these plants, and they're still, most of them are still with me in Colombia in completely different conditions. They were happy in both places, and they are definitely in different situations. I have a lot of south windows in this house right now. I had no south windows in my old apartment. I only had east and west, and now I only have north and south. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that my plants are just as happy if not happier here probably due to humidity but that's another one of those factors that is different based on where you live so understanding that nobody has the right answers like I would say yeah everything is up for debate in my opinion so what works for you works for you and there's no need to feel like you need to change something if what you're doing is working i'm a really big advocate for not making houseplants a big job for yourself because that just stresses you out and it makes it a lot easier to get burnt out on plants like really really fast i know that i'm a person who tends to burn through hobbies like really fast and houseplants has thankfully been one of those that has not been like that for me because I think I'm good at pacing myself and taking breaks when I need to, even if that means something dies or something like goes downhill a little bit, because I, ugh, like I love houseplants, but it's not my entire identity. <laughs> so I think it's important to remember that and um, just have an understanding that it's okay if you don't take care of your plants like your favorite YouTuber does, and if you don't love your plants as much as your favorite YouTuber says they do. You know what I mean? <laughs> So take what works for you and run with it. Just do your thing with your plants. And if that means that you have literally five house plants, that is amazing. Like you don't need to have this. <laughs> you don't need to have it. If it doesn't work for your schedule, it doesn't work for your schedule, you know? So I want you to remember that this is your hobby. It's what you do for yourself and don't make it more stressful than it needs to be. So I think that it can be stressful to read a bunch of conflicting information online and then you get this YouTuber saying this, you get this horticulturalist saying this. It's a lot. So take what you will from each person and just eat your fruit basket. <laughs> I need a fruit basket like merch piece, right? Do we think we need like a, a plant advice fruit basket for merch? I think that'd be pretty cute. But anyway, um, I think that's all I have to say for this video. So thank you very much for joining me on this little advice moment. I love making these videos. I love any time I can help you realize that it doesn't need to be this big thing. It's not that serious, it's a plant. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go and make your little plan for your plants, and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Oh, and also, don't forget to check out Audible. Audible has every book I've ever looked for, so if you are in a situation where you're looking for that one audiobook, or that one whatever, and you can't find it, definitely check it out. It will probably be on Audible, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.